Welcome to one of the many training videos released by the Taylor Company. We hope that you will learn the proper techniques in operating and maintaining your Taylor Freezer. In this video, we have the models C708, C709, C716, and C717. The model C708 is a single barrel, extra high capacity, soft serve, heat treatment freezer with pump. The model C709 is a single barrel, high capacity, grab bed, soft serve, heat treatment freezer. The C716 is a twin twist, extra high capacity, console, soft serve, heat treatment freezer with pump. And the model C717 is a twin twist, high capacity, console, gravity fed, soft serve, heat treatment freezer. Model C708 will be used in this training video for demonstrating the procedures. All models previously mentioned are, for all practical operating purposes, the same. Please refer to your manual for detailed instructions. This video is broken down into sections. These sections are Manager's Menu, Assembly, Mix Pump Assembly, Sanitizing, Timing, Daily Closing, Daily Opening, Manual Brush Cleaning, Draining Product, Rinsing, Hopper Cleaning, Disassembly, and Brush Cleaning. We'll begin by going through some of the screens in the Manager's Menu. First, ensure the power switch is on. With the access code screen on the display, use the select symbol to set the first code number in the cursor position. When the correct number is selected, touch the select symbol to move the cursor to the next number position. Continue to enter the proper access code numbers until all four numbers are displayed. Then touch the select symbol. The manager's menu list will display on the screen, provided the correct access code is entered. If an incorrect number is entered for the access code, the display will exit the menu program when the select symbol is selected. To scroll down the menu, touch the down arrow. You'll see Reset Draw Counter. Touch Select, touch Next, and the Select key. Choose Yes or No and touch Select. Change Draw Counter if desired and touch select. Next is set clock. Change clock if desired and touch select. Auto heat time is next. We then see auto start time. You may change the time at which the machine automatically enters the auto mode. Standby option is used to manually place the machine in standby mode during long no draw periods. The brush clean cycle mode is next. This option allows you to select the maximum amount of days between brush cleaning the machine. You may then enable or disable the audible tone which happens when mix gets low in the hopper. You'll then see the fault description screen. This screen lists current faults. Touching select will clear the faults if corrected. You may then view up to 40 of the last soft locks, hard locks, brush clean dates, or aborted cycles. The heat cycle summary option displays general heat cycle information. Heat cycle data displays critical times and temperatures for the last 366 heat cycles. System information displays the software version bill of materials, serial number, and the language. In the current condition screen, you'll see the current viscosity, hopper, and barrel temperatures. When in heat treat mode, it will display the phase time and safety time. 
Assembly. Make sure the power switch is off. When lubricating parts, use an approved food grade lubricant such as Taylor Lube. Before installing the beater drive shaft, lubricate the groove on the beater drive shaft. The middle section of the boot seal should be convex or extended out. If not, turn the seal inside out. Slide the boot seal over the small end of the shaft and engage into the groove on the shaft. Heavily lubricate the inside portion of the boot seal and also lubricate the flat end of the boot seal that comes in contact with the rear shell bearing. Apply an even coat of lubricant to the shaft. Do not lubricate the hex end. Insert the beater drive shaft through the rear shell bearing in the freezing cylinder and engage the hex end firmly into the drive coupling. The scraper blades are very sharp and they cause injury. Check the scraper blades for any nicks or signs of wear. Replace blade if needed. Install the clips over the blades. Place the rear scraper blade over the rear holding pin on the beater. Replace blades every three months. Holding the rear blade on the beater, slide the beater into the freezing cylinder halfway. Install the front scraper blade over the front holding pin. Install the beater shoes. Slide the beater assembly the rest of the way into the freezing cylinder. Ensure the beater is properly seated by turning the beater slightly. When in position, the beater will not protrude beyond the front of the freezing cylinder. Assemble the freezer door. Place the door gasket into the groove on the back of the door. Do not lubricate the gasket. Slide the front bearing over the baffle rod so that the flanged edge is against the door. Slide the three O-rings into the grooves on the draw valve and lubricate. Lightly lubricate inside of the top of the freezer door valve cavity. Insert the draw valve from the top with the draw valve handle slot facing forward. Install the freezer door. Install the hand screws with the longer ones on top. Tighten equally in a crisscross pattern. Install the draw handle and secure with a pivot pin. The adjustable draw handle provides portion control, giving a better consistent quality to the product. The draw handle should be adjusted to provide a flow rate of 5 to 7.5 ounces by weight for 10 seconds. To increase the flow rate, Turn the adjustment screw clockwise. Turn the adjustment screw counterclockwise to decrease the flow rate. Slide the two drip pans into the holes in the left and rear panels. Install the front drip tray and splash shield under the door spout. Mix pump assembly. Inspect the rubber pump parts for nicks, cuts, or holes, and replace if necessary. Assemble the piston. Slide the red o-ring into the groove on the piston. Do not lubricate the o-ring. Apply a thin layer of lubricant to the inside of the pump cylinder at the retaining pin hole end of the pump cylinder. Notice the location of the piston inside the pump cylinder. Slide the o-ring into the groove of the valve cap. Do not lubricate the o-ring. Slide the pump valve gasket into the holes on the cap. Notice a small black tab on the gasket. Do not lubricate the gasket. 
Insert the valve body cap into the hole in the mix inlet adapter. Notice the notch in the mix inlet adapter. Insert the mix inlet assembly into the pump cylinder. Notice the notch in the end of the pump cylinder. Secure the pump parts in position by sliding the retaining pin through the cross holes. Assemble the feed tube assembly. Slide the check ring into the groove of the feed tube. Install one red o-ring on each end of the mix feed tube and lubricate. Lay the pump assembly, pump clip, cotter pin, and agitator in the bottom of the mix hopper for sanitizing. Slide the large black o-ring and the two smaller black o-rings into the grooves on the drive shaft. Thoroughly lubricate the o-rings and shaft. Do not lubricate the hex end of the shaft. Install the hex end of the drive shaft into the drive hub at the rear wall of the mix hopper. For ease in installing the pump, position the ball crank of the drive shaft in the 3 o'clock position. Sanitizing. Clean and sanitize your hands before proceeding. Prepare two gallons of an approved 100 parts per million sanitizing solution. Use warm water and follow the manufacturer's specifications. Pour the two gallons of sanitizing solution over all of the parts in the bottom of the mix hopper and allow it to flow into the freezing cylinder. While the solution is flowing into the freezing cylinder, first clean the mix level sensing probe, mix inlet hole, air mix pumps, clip, feed tube, and locking clip. Install the pump assembly. Align the drive hole in the piston with the drive crank of the drive shaft. Secure the pump in place by slipping the pump clip over the collar of the pump, making sure the clip fits into the grooves in the collar. Install the pump end of a mix feed tube and secure with a cotter pin. This prevents sanitizer from spraying everywhere. Prepare another two gallons of warm sanitizing solution and pour into the mix hopper. Brush the exposed sides of the hopper, assemble the agitator and wait at least five minutes before proceeding with these instructions. Now beneath the door spout, touch the wash and pump symbols. The wash mode will cause the sanitizing solution in the freezing cylinder to be agitated. Open and close the draw valve six times. Open the draw valve and draw off all of the sanitizing solution. Touch the wash and pump symbols and close the draw valve. Be sure your hands are clean and sanitized before going on. If the agitator should stop turning during normal operation, remove the agitator from the agitator drive shaft housing Brush clean and return the agitator onto the agitator drive shaft housing. Stand the mix feed tube in the corner of the mix hopper and place the cotter pin in position in the outlet fitting of the pump. Priming. Use only fresh mix when priming the freezer. With the pail beneath the door spout, open the draw valve. Pour two and a half gallons of fresh mix into the hopper. This will force out any remaining sanitizing solution. When full strength mix is flowing from the door spout, close the draw valve. When mix stops bubbling down into the freezing cylinder, remove the cotter pin from the outlet fitting of the mix pump and insert the outlet end of the mix feed tube into the mix inlet hole and the inlet end into the outlet fitting of the mix pump. Secure with a cotter pin. Tap the auto symbol. Fill the hopper with fresh mix. The mix level must sit above the agitator. Place the hopper cover in position. Daily closing procedures. These procedures must be done correctly to allow the heat treatment cycle to perform properly. The function of the heat treatment cycle is to destroy bacteria 
for raising the temperature of the mix, the freezing cylinder, and the hopper to a specified temperature or specified time, and then bringing the temperature back down low enough to retard spoilage. The heat treatment cycle will start at the time designated in the auto heat time screen. Before the heat cycle may be started, the mixed level and the mixed hopper must be above the mixed low probe. The mixed low light must not be on. If the brush clean counter display is counted down to one day, do not add mix. The machine must be disassembled and brush cleaned within 24 hours. And the freezer must be in the auto or standby mode. Remove the hopper cover. Make sure your hands are clean and sanitized before performing the next steps. Remove the agitator from the mix hopper. Take the agitator and the hopper cover to the sink. Rinse these parts in cool, clean water. Prepare a small amount of an approved 100 parts per million cleaning sanitizing solution. Use warm water and follow the manufacturer's specifications. Brush clean the agitator and the hopper cover. Prepare another bucket of sanitizing solution and sanitize the agitator and the hopper cover. Install the agitator back into the drive shaft housing and replace the hopper cover. Important. If you do not install the agitator correctly, the machine will fail the heat cycle and lock out in the morning. Return to the freezer with a small amount of cleaning solution. Dip the door spout brush into the cleaning solution and brush clean the door spout and the bottom of the draw valve. To assure sanitized conditions are maintained, brush item for a total of 60 seconds, repeatedly dipping the brush in cleaning solution. Remove, clean and reinstall the two drip pans in the left and rear panels. Using a clean, sanitized towel, wipe down the freezer door, front panel, the area around the bottom of the freezer door, and any other areas that demonstrate a buildup of either moisture or food substance. Heat cycle. The heat cycle will start when the clock on the machine reaches the auto heat time, set in the manager's menu. There are three phases of the heat cycle, heating, holding, and cooling. Each phase has a time limit. If any one of these three phases fails to reach the proper temperature within the time limit, the cycle will automatically abort and return to the standby mode. A failure message will appear on the display to inform the operator that the machine did not successfully complete the heat treatment cycle. The product may not be safe to serve. The freezer will be locked out, soft locked, out of the auto mode. The operator will be given the option of selecting the heat symbol, which will begin a new heat cycle, or touching the wash symbol, which will place the side affected into the off mode to allow brush clean of the machine. Once the heat cycle is started, it cannot be interrupted. The heat cycle will take a maximum of four hours to be completed with full hoppers. Do not attempt to